Good evening. Welcome to our acting research station. In this evening's masterclass, our monitoring equipment is set to observe solo live performance in one of its most electrifyingly unpredictable forms, the craft of presenting the weather forecast. All of us on the planet, whether we're planning an outdoor lunch party, a game of tennis, or just a morning stroll to rehearsals, we are all affected by what they say it's going to do. But as an actor, I've always felt that the power of the Met Man's art lies not so much in dry meteorological facts and figures as in the astonishing range of performance techniques he uses to deliver them. A mesmerizing alchemy of voice, gesture, jacket, hairstyle and weather map. And it's the techniques of performance forecasting that my young friends and I are going to be working on this evening. So, a stormy night in prospect, methinks. <laughs> But first, let's warm up with some arm exercises. Absolutely, everywhere. That would be no fun. We're watching with interest the swirl of showers, the swirl of cloud. This swirl here. This is the swirling uh, mass of cloud. So it's this swirling mass, that swirling mass of cloud. It's swirling around and around and around. It's swirling around. Some beautifully loose arms there. OK, let's imagine a weather performer. We'll call him Jim. He's getting out of bed in the morning. It's a bulletin day. What's the first thing Jim has to think about? Find out what the weather's going to do. Rather more fundamental than that, Bill. Alan? Find out what shape his voice is in. Yes, and if he was going to attempt a regional accent at bulletin speed, that would be a crucial one. But before that... Surely, Jim's first thoughts are going to be about costume. It really is the big one, isn't it, Saskia? Mm. And there are all sorts of possibilities here. The suit, sweater sent in by a viewer, Blazer, thank you, Bill. Blouse, blues on top, cardigan. It's difficult to know where to begin, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Obviously, we don't have time to go into the whole range of costume options outfit by outfit. So let's just ask Michael Fish to show us some of his check jackets. Michael. Thank you very much, Nick. Well, it certainly was a scorcher today. A fair number of showers, actually, in northern Scotland. Anyhow, we've got some pretty peculiar weather around at the moment. 32 degrees, 90 Fahrenheit, would you believe? I don't know about you, but I've actually had my central heating on the last couple of days. So plenty of styles and, indeed, periods to choose from there. And we'll be picking up some more unusual costume ideas as we move through the evening. Let's take it, then, that Jim Weathercast has found a jacket. He's arrived at the studio and he's had a swirl. There's one last little pre-bulletin task to be carried out. We don't want to dwell on it, but it is necessary. I'll let Bill Giles explain. Lovely uh, bright sunshine. I've just looked out the lavatory window here. It's the only place we can actually see out. And yes, it's uh, pretty miserable. I've just looked out of the lavatory window here and it's horrible, drizzly rain. Yeah, I've just poked my head outside the window. It's still dull, misty, foggy weather outside. The sun's streaming in the window at uh, the Blue Room at Television Centre. Well, in actual fact, I've sat down in the last half an hour and had a look at the weather maps again. As I say, rather an obvious one, but even with a short bulletin, it makes sense to be on the safe side. Right. Moving on, refreshed and relieved now to do some forecasting of our own. Could we have the rehearsal map in? And Juliet, if you'd like to trottle up to the hockey. And this is a wet bank holiday speech, I believe. Yeah, from Easter 1985. Oh, my heavens, that was an absolute shocker, wasn't it? In most areas, yeah. Good, good, good. Let's give it a canter through, then. Well, looks like a pretty rotten old one today, I'm afraid. Most areas getting a soaking by lunchtime. It's already chucking it down in Wales. OK, and stop you there. Very, very nice. Um, um de dum de dum How rotten is this bank holiday, Juliet? Oh, well, it's fairly widespread. I mean, mm, it's... But how rotten for you as a character? Ah. Oh, well, uh... let's think, shall we? She's in the studio, mm -hmm. out of the wet, She's not in Wales. So make it lighter. <laughs> I think it has to be. I mean, she could almost be smug, actually. Oh, yeah, why not play that? Mm, right. Pretty rotten. OK. Well, looks oh, like a pretty thing, rotten... Julie, oh, oh, sorry. No, but no, uh, the other thing, I think this speech is absolutely sitting up on its hind legs begging for a Scottish accent, don't you? Well, it needs something, yeah. Mm, absolutely panting for it. And I know it's not the most original approach, but in my experience, the reason things have been done before is because they the, work. They work, yeah. <laughs> pretty rotten. Well, looks like a pretty rotten oh, old Juliet, one today. it's got to go like the absolute flipping clappers. We've got an awful lot of weather to get through and only two minutes to do it here, then, OK? okay. Once again, swift and Scottish. 
Well, looks like a pretty rotten old one today, I'm afraid. And smug. Most areas getting a soaking by London. It's already chucking it down in Wales. I thought I managed to make that sound remarkably like a railway timetable. <laughs> I was going to say laundry list. <laughs> no, no, no. Early days. It's all there, I think. It just needs to ferment now, so you have a ponder and a percolate, and we'll see if we can creep up and surprise it anon. Okay. <laughs> okay. Juliet and I have been digging and delving for nuance and emotional undercurrent in a rotten one. Let's have a look at some other unsavoury ones now, starting with Michael Fish and a nasty one. It's a nasty old one today. In fact, it's a bit more like Christmas than it is um, Easter or just after Easter. But that's all the good news. The rest is downhill from here on, I'm afraid. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry. It's going to rain. <laughs> really will be a pretty miserable day, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, it's just about drying up, uh, Blackpool. It's not showering in the Central Highlands, by the way. It's raining very heavily at the moment. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm afraid the weather's looking pretty, well, what can I say, diabolical, I think, today in most parts of the country. Michael showing the master's touch with a diabolical there and somehow managing to hit exactly the right tone of cheerful resignation that Juliet and I failed to find for our rotten one. Let's just roll back on Michael's nasty one for a moment and pick up another important point. It's a nasty old one today. In fact, it's a bit more like Christmas than it is um, Easter or just after Easter. There's some really atrocious weather on offer, I'm afraid, for you today. Well down to the south of it. Fish slips in an extra atrocious here and brings the nastiness even more vividly to life with a beautifully placed more like Christmas. The more like, of course, a standard unseasonal outlook expression. It's going to be a pretty miserable weekend, I think. More like mid-November than mid-July. More like the middle of February than the middle of June. More like football rather than cricket. More like summer tomorrow, but I don't think it's necessarily going to last. So an abundance of tones and flavours for Juliet to mull over. But we must move into the bulletin proper now and work on ways of performing some specific types of weather. And we'll start with one of the most lyrical phrases in the whole bad weather repertoire. Showers in most parts, more particularly in the south. A simple stopped hexametric with bistrophic female ending. And where do the stresses come, please, Saskia? Showers and parts. Absolutely correct. And that's the way we've all been taught. And we're all completely convinced, are we, that that's the only way to do it? Yeah. Yes. Well, yes, otherwise you completely blow the rhythm of the line. Well, I don't know. I'm sitting at home watching, and I'm thinking, my golly, I wouldn't half like to see Saskia take some risks with that hexametric. Mm, Let's see if we can sail a bit closer to the wind, shall we? And I've only one word to say here, and that's fish. Just to recap, showers in most parts, more particularly in the south. Fish inserts the pause here, before in the south, causing the showers to literally leap off the chart. It's known as the suspended southern dactyl, and it never fails to have me on the edge of my seat. Quite a cool night in the north, 7 is 45, much milder in the south. The sting dry in the south. There's plenty of cloud though in the south. A lot of cloud to start with in the south. Light winds in the south. On Friday sunshine and showers in the south. And uh, they're providing showers over the uh, south. So, suspending your souths, costume awareness, keeping cheerful and going to the lavatory. The natural elements of a forecasting performance. Let's think about summer weather now. And in particular, the powerful resonating theme which runs through almost every bulletin from June to September. We'll ask Bill Giles to lead us in. What's the weather like, Bill? Not too bad to start with today, Nick, but I don't think there's going to be a great deal of hot sunshine in this country over this uh, coming week. It's pretty unsettled weather. And I think Francis uh, Wilson has picked the wrong week to start his holiday. Now, the ruined holiday is the absolute structural linchpin of a summer outlook. It packs a massive, dramatic punch, and it can be immensely therapeutic for a performer who hasn't managed to get away yet. Let's see some more holidays being ruined. I am pleased to report substantial thunderstorms this afternoon and evening over the Mediterranean and an active frontal system over Scandinavia. Still raining in Portugal, you'll be pleased to know. Not very good at all if you've got a few days off. If you've got friends on holiday in Greece, for instance, they've been having one or two thunderstorms. If you're going out this weekend, <laughs> take one of them with you. That spoils things a little bit if you're uh, thinking of going over on holiday. But my advice, if you're going on holiday this week, take a wetsuit. The ruined holiday, then, often providing a shared moment between audience and performer. Right. Any questions so far? Yes, Alan. Um, Nicholas, 
So far, we've been dealing almost exclusively with bad weather. Mm. Is there a technical gear change that has to be made when we come to forecast, say, a period of good weather? Absolutely none whatsoever, Alan. A forecast is a forecast is a forecast is a forecast is a forecast. Doesn't matter if it's rotten, diabolical, flipping awful, or more like Christmas. You've just got to get out there and give it the same high-risk Met Office fizz. And if you're not prepared to do that, there's a hundred hungry weathermen out there who'd be only too delighted to take your jacket off you. Mm, well okay, Alan. Fantastic. Let's look at some fine weather fizzing now. Once again, we start with a more like and an original costume idea from Fish. Good evening to you. Something more like summer tomorrow, but I don't think it's necessarily going to last. Get out there quickly because it isn't going to last. But it isn't going to last. Well, for goodness sake, go out and enjoy it because it's not going to last too long. The message is make the most of it while it lasts. But that really isn't going to last very long at all, I'm afraid. Enjoy Saturday because it's the last one you're going to have for a while. Each knee, sun, two, each. Me. Effective so forecasting is as much me. about inner peace as meteorological me. accuracy. <gasps> so These special me. Kadang exercises Ish. now form an important me. part of the Met so Office training course. See. And breathe. And back to your seats. Very important to do those before every bulletin. A long reach and a supple swirling finger, essential. For me, it's very much an all-body art. Nothing saddens me more than to see young performers only forecasting from the waist up. I remember bumping into Bill Giles in the gents at Television Centre and he said exactly the same thing. <laughs> the legs, then, play a crucial part in what must be the supreme test of body-mind-voice coordination, the crossover. The rainfall radar for the east still shows quite a few showers behind me here to the northwest. The thunderstorms pushing out this into the area the of north. cloud, which brought all the uh, rain across uh, yesterday. But we're now looking out in the Atlantic to this. And the heavier area. bursts of rain, some rain and drizzle well ahead of it. But then just behind me, another batch of uh, cloud and rain coming up to away across the towards the continent, and it's just disappearing behind me there. That hardly gets out of the way before the next lot begins to push its way in. Twinkling footwork and a wonderful awareness of what's brewing up behind. And it's a mixed up old outlook that we're going to work on now. So, if I could have another volunteer from the ranks, Alan, if you'd like to step up and. Oh, a host of Alans. <laughs> yes. Alan, too, let's thee and me saunter mapwards and we'll have a stab at a spot of Ketley, shall us? Right. Uh, do you want to quickly pop to the loo? No, or? I'll dive straight. Okay, you let Ripsky, Alan. <clears throat> Thank you, Debbie. Well, not too bad for most of us today, but Kent's going to copper pack it, so if you're planning a day out... OK, uh, stop you there, Alan. Um, smashing, apart from the fact that I didn't believe a single word of it. Anybody else believe it? No. OK, let's see what we've got. Debbie, don't buy that relationship for a start. Uh, what's it like to be introduced by someone called Debbie? Hmm? Do you know anyone called Debbie? Well, look through the phone book, Find someone called Debbie, get them to introduce you. Go to Kent, find out what it's like to cop a packet there. Feel your forecast, Alan. If you don't believe in your weather, then how the bleep can the audience? Try again. Not too um, bad. Uh, Nicholas. Yes, Chloe. Well, we've got a suggestion. Uh, what is it? Because I really want to push Alan into Well, it's this. just, I mean, I don't know how Alan would feel about this, but we thought it'd be really good if you showed us how you'd do the forecast. Oh, so yes. Exactly. Oh, no, that's an awful thing. Oh, why? Oh, it'd be really nice. nice. I mean, poor Alan. No, no. no why is it delighting? The be an honour and a privilege. There you go. There you go. Yes, he uh, can show us. Well, well if you're sure you don't mind. Not at all. I, I mean, it seems so dreadfully unfair. Don't be silly. Uh, all right. Uh, well, thank you, Alan, and thank you, Debbie. Not too bad for most of us, but Kent's going to cop a packet, so if you're planning a day out in the South, then my advice is to take a snorkel and a pair of flippers. Wow. It was so well paced. <laughs> I mean, ridiculously under-rehearsed. Uh, you see, Alan, I, I think that's sort of what you have to do. Uh, yes. In a weather forecasting performance, as in any other, it's the big effect that counts with Joe Punter. And so of all the weather casting techniques, this last one is my desert island choice. It's the poignant moment of introspection and profound character revelation that comes at the very end of the bulletin. 
cold down there as well, the temperatures will reflect that. All in all, that wet weather moving in. That's about it from me. I'll see you in half an hour's time. A change to see sunny weather, and uh, I'll see you later. Mm -hmm. Superb. The tragic dimension of the Met Man's predicament expressed with shattering clarity. Let's see it once more. And uh, I'll see you later. Mm -hmm. The weather forecast, then. A thing of such volatile unpredictability that even during periods of unusually settled weather, no two bulletins are ever quite the same. Well, that's just about it from me now, so I'll say goodbye and leave you with a final look at Bill Giles. Bye-bye for now. Let's have a look at the summary, then. It shows the best of the sunshine over England and Wales. And that's it for me. And that's it for me. And that's it. That's it. See you later. Bye-bye for now. That's it for me. Bye-bye for now. That's it for me. Bye-bye for now. That's it for me. Bye-bye for now. And that's it for me. Bye-bye. And that's it for me. And that's it for me. And that's it. That's it. See you later. Bye-bye for now. That's it for me. Bye-bye for now. That's it for me. Bye-bye for now. That's it for me. Bye-bye for now. That's it. Bye-bye. And that's it for me. And that's it for me. That's it. That's it. See you later. Bye-bye.